DC Voltage! Welcome to Rider Ride guys, I'm Chad. This is Steel. And today we are going to be talking about parallel charging, the basics of do's, don'ts and how to do it. that what is that a VHS collection we're doing this episode because you guys asked for it in the comments you've actually been asking a lot of times you wanted to know the basics of parallel charging and the system that we use so we're going to explain that for you today at this point in time it's probably worth pointing out that there's lots of very very detailed information out there on YouTube already about all the specifics of parallel charging so we're not going to get into the real detailed section of this but we're going to go through a basic overview and if you guys want more information we can we can answer it in the comments and things like that or you can do some more searching let's just talk about the, ses the setup before we actually go into what you need to do to charge parallel so you have to have a setup that can do parallel charging before you actually parallel charge so the whole deal with parallel charging is that you want to be able to charge at at least one c if you have six batteries and they're a thousand milliamps then you need to be able to charge at six amps what we have here is an i charger 406 duo and this is the charger setup that myself and steel use so all of you guys out there that are asking what specific charger we use we have the same setup with slightly different parallel boards, but essentially the same setup. What makes this charger nice is you have 40 amps at your disposal per channel. So that's what the 4O stands for, and then you can do up to 6S. So you have two channels, both can do 40 amps, and both can do 6S. You can, you can customize your charging, so your voltage cut off, your amp cut off, you can cycle your batteries many times, So and you've got preset features in there. So it's not cheap, but it's basically got all the bells and whistles and does yeah. everything that you need. Yeah, I so. want to say the retail price is around $300. So I think you've seen them go on sale around the holidays for like 250 bucks. But every other charger out there, you're going to spend more than $150 on a really crappy charger. So you might as well just go ahead and spend that extra little bit of money and get something that's quality. So we've got the uh, the actual charger, but this charger requires a 12 volt output. Uh, DC to voltage only. DC voltage, so you can't plug this direct into the main main wall of of your house. So yeah. you're going to need a power supply. So what we use is it's a HP DPS 1200 watt power supply, and this comes out of a server, uh, server yeah, front, yeah, an, server. an internet server. So. We'll put all the links uh, for things like this kind of thing in the description. But yeah, you can get this kind of thing off eBay. These are old servers that have come out of the power, the, the, the service of power supplies. Yeah. They're still fine and they work fine. You can pick them up for about 30 bucks yeah. off eBay. For those of you that don't know what that is, essentially you're taking your wall voltage, which is 120 volts AC, transitioning it into DC voltage and outputting at 12 volts. The only real critical thing you need to do is when you get it, there's an adjustment inside this thing that will allow you to get exactly 12 volts. You need to make sure you do that so that the charger is seeing exactly 12 volts. There, These power supplies like this do require a very slight modification. You might need to uh, solder a diode on the back there, but it's pretty basic. And once again, for those who are interested in this, we'll put the, in the links uh, any information required to, to work on these. But these are a pretty common power supply that a lot of people use. What's great about these is they're small, lightweight, and pack a punch. So I'm getting around 50 amps uh, out of this power supply that I can output through this, which is more than enough than I need for my regular charging. So next along the line, once you've got the power supply and the charger, then we just need the parallel boards. These parallel boards here are my own personal parallel boards, and I actually got them from Hobby King of all places. They're actually a very, very good parallel board. I know still you use something slightly different but it basically looks the yeah. same so the key thing that I like about the parallel boards is you can fit four batteries on there each uh, section is individually fused it has a main fuse on the front here so if you do something wrong it's going to blow the fuse straight away and what I also like about it is that you can daisy chain two of them together so and for those of you that don't know parallel charging essentially you're charging one big battery so you can charge all of your batteries at one time essentially taking your charge time from 45 minutes a piece down to 45 minutes to, for all your batteries if you're charging at 1c that's typically that's that's essentially what people need to know is that when you put all these batteries together they're acting as one bigger battery so what i can do is i can grab a 1300 and i can grab an 1800 and i can charge them together and that's not a problem so yeah, the size the of the voltages. pack the size of the pack is fine 
but it's the voltage that's the important thing. They need to be the same voltage. So generally speaking, they need to be within 0.2 of a volt of each other. To when you check the voltages, if you've got 10 batteries, you put them all in piles, so they've all got very similar voltage, so they're within there, say that 0.2 volt pile, and then you can charge that pile together. And that's where it's handy to have two separate yeah. Um, two separate charges, so I've got two a def separate banks, so I can put lower voltage here and higher voltage here. Plug it into there, and you can see in there the different cell voltages, and then you match them up. So let's have a quick little look here, and we can actually go through some of these batteries. So these cell voltages are all around 3.87, 3.89. So if we put the next battery in, you'll see that that's 3.71, 3.73. So that's close enough, that's within 0.2 uh, volts per cell. 3.78, 3.79, so all of these batteries are within 0.2 volts per cell. So if I was to get, say, a battery that was saying 3.5 volts per cell, then I would keep that one separate, or I would charge it, or I would build it up and charge it up until it's at that point, and then I'd add the other ones. Uh, so my concern was, when he just checked this battery, one of them was a 14.9 volt total, and one was a 15.3 volt total. To me, I would never charge those together just because I'm basing it off of the total pack voltage um, and I don't go within 2.2 2 2 volts away on a total volt of the pack. So, well, um, I, I personally, I'm happy to go within 0.2 volts per cell because it, the total voltage is kind of irrelevant because you're comparing the individual cells with one another. So cell one from here and cell t uh, cell one from here and cell one from here. So it doesn't matter what cell two and cell three and cell four are doing. They all need to be similar in that respect. So that's one of the reasons why I don't go off total voltage. But at the end of the day, you're plugging the main power lead in parallel as well. And you want those voltages to be close. Yep. So, I mean, what it's doing is it's going to pump voltage into the lower cell. So it's going to try to charge the lower cell. So if you have a 15 volt cell and you have a 17 volt cell, the 15 volt one is going to suffer because it's going to try to take the higher voltage or milliamperage and shove it into the, the smaller cell or the lower cell, which is going to increase the heat and cause the pack to get hot. Um, and ultimately, if you did it enough, it would degrade the pack's quality. Yeah. And it's worth pointing out, it's not the discharging of the battery that's the problem, it's the charging of the, bat of the, of the lower battery which is the problem. So yeah. these batteries are designed to take a high C discharge, but they can't handle a, the same C rating charge. Yeah. And that's, that's where they're, they're really being affected. That's the main issue there. So, and I guess the, the real reason like why I do what I do, and I think why Chad does what he does, is... I've always been a stickler on my charging. I've very, been very particular about um, the batteries that I use and also how I charge them. I typically never charge above 1C unless I'm just in an obnoxious hurry, but typically I don't charge above 1C. And I also number all my batteries. If I have like, if I'm out flying one day and I notice a cell or I notice a battery's like dropping voltage or, or doing something funky, I'll note that cell like, oh, that was pack number three. And I go home and when I get home, I'll check it and make sure all the, the cells are um, balanced. Uh, and back, that's a so. really good idea. That were a good way of troubleshooting lots of the stuff. I must admit, I just get lazy. It's something that I probably should do to number my cells, but uh, I, yeah, I get when they start uh, playing up, I put a knife through them. Whoa! <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, yeah. Well, awkward. Next, next point. <laughs> when it starts, when we'll just next we're, point. <laughs> do the next point. I'm ready. <laughs> He wanted it to record all this. Okay, so let's get on to the charging step. Uh, so we've just got basically a simple four step process for the basics of parallel charging for doing it right. Step number one, you wanna check the cell count on the batteries. So you don't wanna be charging a three cell with a four cell. You wanna make sure that they're all the same cell count. Second of all, you want to be checking the voltage of each battery in each individual cell to make sure that they're within 0.2 volts. Thirdly, you wanna plug the battery in so that you've got the main power lead plugged in and the balance lead and get them all plugged in together. When you're official and you're ready to go, you have everything plugged in and you're about to start charging, you need to change the output of your charger to match 1C of whatever batteries you have in there. So if you have six 1000 milliamp four cells, the cell count does not matter. You're looking at the milliamperage. So you have 6,000 milliamps total. So you need to output six amps out of your charger to get 1C. You do 12 amps, you get 2C, and it just all charges as one battery. So now for the don't section. <laughs> do not plug in different cell counts. I've done it. Yeah, I've done it too. What happens? It, 
Smoke comes out. Mad smoke. Do not connect batteries with vastly different voltages. Because you will get another fire. The smoke will come out. Smoke will come to your house. I think you've said that before. Yep, smoke will. Um, and, yeah, you'll have this terrible smell all around your house. So just don't. Don't do it. And you might die. Do not attach your balance lead to the wrong size balance port or put it in backwards. All of these balance ports are keyed, so you can't put them in the wrong one or backwards. But if you push hard enough, you will be able to do it. That's one of the reasons why these uh, balance uh, boards actually have fuses in them, so that if you do mess up, you actually blow the fuse first. But you still don't want to do it. Be very careful that you do put it in the right port. So if you've got a 4S battery, put it in the 4S port and put it the right way, the right way around, so that it doesn't go bad. Do not charge suspect batteries together with good batteries. One thing that's very important to note with parallel charging is that if you're charging three batteries and one of these batteries goes bad, it'll take those other batteries down with them. So if you've got a suspect battery, charge it by itself. And lastly, do not leave your charger unattended. If you are close to it, you can actually do something about it. But if you're upstairs having a coffee or having a sleep, Things can go bad very quickly and you're not around to fix it. I'm sure you'd agree. I love singular sleeps. Yeah. Thank you for tuning into this episode of Rotor Riot. It was actually a, a question that we got a bunch of comments on our last video about how to, how to parallel charge. So I hope that's covered all your questions, but if you've got more questions, put them in the comments. Please like, subscribe, do all the things. The typical things. The typical things. <laughs> I'll see you guys later. Thanks guys. Cheers. David's, young. David's not even friends with Rotor Riot. He's fired. No, what? I'm not friends with you. Ooh. Damn, he didn't accept your friend request. I always told you when on Facebook, people lied. <laughs>